Uh, today at DDW 2016, I was fortunate enough to be able to be asked to deliver the state-of-the-art lecture on treatment of hepatitis C. And I say fortunate because hepatitis C is such an exciting kind of dynamic field right now, and especially therapeutics. And so really being able to relate what's gone on in the last year and sort of a little bit of a sense of where we're going in the future was, was the focus. We have very high rates of cure. Um, most patients will achieve that endpoint. We're now at the point where we can start to think about not cure within our community, cure within our country, but really elimination of hepatitis C on a global basis. Well, it was very interesting and it's, um, there will be some new drugs and uh, we will soon get rid of hepatitis C. So at today's session, the, the focus was on really emphasizing strides made this year with respect to the real world experience with the new direct antiviral drug therapies. Um, and really demonstrating that we're getting the same successes in the real world that they got in the clinical trial. So we have a highly effective therapy can be delivered to a large number of patients. In the immediate future, we're anticipating the approval of a combination of sevospivir and valpatosphere. Valpatosphere is a second generation NS5A inhibitor. And what's remarkable about this drug, I mean, we have many excellent drugs already, is this, that this will be the first pangenotypic drug. It'll be a, a therapy that we can apply across all of the genotypes for hepatitis C. Um, up until now, our therapies have been genotype specific. So we did something different for genotype one versus genotype three, but this will be our first pangenotypic therapy. And, and the study results that I shared with the audience uh, demonstrate that the success, the cure rates are 95% or higher as we use the drugs more and, and they're more patients are being exposed and they're usually more complex patients than we're in the clinical trials. We're identifying you know, new drug interactions or toxicities that weren't previously recognized. Not that those are preventing us from using the drugs, but really just the need to be vigilant about the fact that very rare or uncommon um, drug-drug interactions or side effects might be evident. When we started treating liver patients 15 years ago, uh, the, the regimens were quite uh, straightforward, a lot of side effects and complications. Now. The treatment is much more manageable, but uh, a lot of the, the resistance and virus uh, loads and parameters, all that stuff, it's just basically going to make it so much challenging, but at the same time good for the patients because the outcomes are so much better. While we have very, very successful therapy, there are 5% of patients or 10% of patients, depending on your genotype, who don't respond, That meaning they, when you stop the drug, they get a relapse. Those patients um, almost always have then resistance to the drugs to which they've been exposed. So that's a challenging group of what to do next. But more importantly, he said, you know, the future looks good there as well, that sort of the new drug combos that are coming down the, the pipe are, are really the ones that are probably gonna be best for those patients that have failed the current direct antiviral drugs. So, so the message should be to wait for them if, if you can, but if you, if, you know, if you must treat now, um, I gave them some strategies on, on how to try to do that well. I think that the, the main messages that I hope they, they left with was a sense of optimism that we have highly effective therapies, but, but it, we're going to have more and that we're going to get even more clever about how we're doing treatment and ensuring that we have a success when we do treat a patient.